Power creep is probably one of the biggest issues that War Thunder has, but it feels like people don't talk about it all that often. I guess it's just because they're waiting until their favorite nation gets their turn on top of the power creep ladder. That, or no one can think of a good solution for it. Either way, I figured I'd take a jab at the problem. For anyone out of the loop, the definition of power creep is as follows. A certain flaw in game design, where content release later tends to get more powerful as time goes, often leaving older content underpowered or in a bad position balance-wise. Theoretically, with how War Thunder balances its vehicles, power creep shouldn't be a problem. A vehicle's battle rating could always be adjusted so that it's viable and fun to play. This often doesn't happen for a number of reasons. First, equivalent tanks are almost never introduced at the same time. For example, when the MBT-70 was added, it was the absolute top dog of ground forces, then it was the M1 Abrams. Following the Abrams was the Leopard 2A4. After that, the 2A5, T-80U, and M1A1 were introduced at the same time, but clearly weren't equivalent to each other. The 2A5 is the best of the bunch by a wide metric, and the T-80U is a lot better than the M1A1. Gaijin made the situation even worse by adding an even more powerful 2A5, the STRV-122. While these tanks weren't slash aren't totally invincible to the vehicles they face, the disparity is wide enough that it starts to be an issue. It isn't fun fighting a constant uphill battle, which is what gameplay becomes when power creep is left unchecked. While power creep does primarily affect top tier vehicles, it permeates pretty much the entire game. As an example, for a long time after they were introduced, tier 6 premium MBTs utterly destroyed the competition. They weren't particularly great in up tiers, but once they got down tiers, it was just a slaughter. Even low tier vehicles aren't safe from power creep. The R3 T20 completely wrecked low tier battles for a long time, and still does to some extent. The second reason lies in how Gaijin balances the game. Gaijin first balances a vehicle based on its relative performance. Once the vehicle is released, they adjust the battle rating of the vehicle based on its player stats. This seems like an okay idea on paper, but in practice, it does more harm than good. Not only does this lead to situations where two pretty much identical tanks have different battle ratings, but it allows some relatively overpowered vehicles to stay where they are, or even have its BR lowered. When the player base finds out that a particular vehicle is overpowered, they will usually flock to that vehicle en masse. Now, it should go without saying that the average War Thunder player is exactly that, average. So they'll bring down the player stats for the vehicle in question. This happened when I made a video on the blatantly overpowered T-14 assault tank, which saw a slight decrease in overall stats after the video went live. Don't get me wrong, its stats are still disgusting, but there was a decrease. For tanks that aren't as stupidly broken, this drop has a large effect on how its performance is interpreted. To Gaijin, this sort of stat decline says, Either this vehicle was balanced on release, or something that we did recently has made it balanced. Compounding this issue is the fact that when it comes to balance changes, Gaijin takes forever. Just like with bug reports, if people don't make a lot of complaints right as a vehicle is released, it is going to take months for anything to change. Shortly after a vehicle is added to the game, Gaijin pretty much loses interest, because they have to constantly add new stuff to make money, which is the third problem. By leaving new vehicles in a somewhat overpowered state, Gaijin incentivizes players to spend money in order to reach that vehicle faster. I'm sure that everyone has been playing an update minutes after it came out, only to see that people have already obtained that brand new MBT. Each one of those MBTs equates to around $50 or so, even more if they purchased all the modifications. This is the reason why, when a lot of new premium or event vehicles are added, they're very strong for a while, but end up getting nerfed later on. It's a business strategy. It can even be seen on a grander scale when a new tech tree is added to the game. These nations will usually receive some sort of buff when they're added, so that players are encouraged to buy premiums to grind out all the new vehicles. For example, when France was added to the game, Solid Shot received a massive buff. Coincidentally, pretty much every French tank uses Solid Shot exclusively. When Italy was added, Armored Cars received a pretty huge buff as well. Can you guess what Italy has a lot of? Yeah, it's Armored Cars. So how do you fix Power Creep? You could try to introduce equivalent vehicles at the same time. That would help a bit but it certainly wouldn't fix the issue, since while they could appear to be equal, gameplay might show otherwise. For this, a constantly running test server would be extremely useful. Instead of only having two dev servers to test out new vehicles, you could have weeks to do so. And if the server is constantly running, you get a better representation of the player base, since people are sometimes busy when a dev server session is going on. Here you'd have an isolated environment in which you could see if a vehicle is going to be overpowered or not. Instead of huge updates separated by around 3-4 to four months, you could have smaller, more frequent updates that are focused on doing a few particular things. For example, an update dedicated to introducing top tier tank destroyers for every nation. Power creep will always be present to some extent, but it can be mitigated. Anyway, that's about all I can think to say on the subject. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
and I'll see you in the next one.